So you've read the title, but before I'm going to show you all of my results where I tested all of the best NVIDIA drivers for system latency and average FPS, I also want to tell you guys how you can check this specifically on your PC because you are right now watching this, you probably have a whole entire different PC build than I have. That fact makes sense that you actually double check this on your PC to see if this driver is actually the best one. Just because there are drivers who overall work the best for the majority of people, it doesn't mean that it has to work the best for your specific PC. So therefore guys, I utilize two tools here. So guys, and for the first tool, we going to utilize latency mon this is by the way the website to it link to it in the video description just simply go into download and then you can see the first option then you're going to scroll down a little bit and then here you have the download latency monitor 731 which is the latest version so guys and once the tool itself is running we have a few indicators something like the current measured interrupt to dpc latency which is basically showing us how many microseconds it needs for a hardware interrupt to be processed on our windows pc and hardware interrupt as an example could be your mouse and your keyboard which are arguably the most important for free building in fortnite or basically having the least amount of delay so you want to have this number as low as possible guys and this is also what you should benchmark for it's also going to show you the highest measured one so therefore whenever you try out different nvidia drivers you always want to make sure to check both of these numbers here they're going to give you the highest indicator of how responsive your system actually is now as an example if you want to actually benchmark fortnite i would highly recommend you to turn down your processes as low as possible for me as an example i have written your obs running and all of that stuff which i simply need to make this video but usually i would have around 60 processes if i have like my audio software for my GoXLR and obs everything turned off and you want to have the processes as low as possible under your windows. I even made a specific guide about this, by the way, which I just want to link right now here. If your number is anywhere close to something like 160, 200, 300, you should definitely watch that video before you do this. But yeah, as mentioned, you want to reduce the processes to an absolute minimum, which I also did, by the way, for the benchmarks itself. And then you're going to click here under this green start button, launch Fortnite in the background, free build for maybe like a minute or something like that. And then it's going to show you here your indicator numbers. And then once you hopped into Fortnite and you maybe free build for a little bit, you're going to click here under stop and it's going to tell you your current interrupt latency and the highest measured one, guys. And these two values, as mentioned, you actually want to compare when trying out different drivers. I'm now going to disable all of the processes actually on my PC so I make sure that there are no other hardware interrupts or even software interrupts so that I can make sure that there are not any other interrupts which could actually influctuate this number because I want to see straight up how good this PC is performing on the current driver. As mentioned, just simply let this run in the background while playing Fortnite, come back to this and click under stop. Now in order to actually get the same benchmark which I have, we're going to utilize MSI Afterburner. This is usually our overclocking tool but it also has a built-in monitoring tool which is basically going to give us the GPU temperature, the usage, and everything like that but what we actually want to mainly focus around guys is the driver tuner this is a service which you can install as well while going through the installation process for msi afterburner after you have it on your pc you want to make sure that you show on-screen display you want to make sure that you copy all of my settings which i have right now here go under setup and then here as well make sure to enable everything enable frame time display maximum frame rate display integer frame rate and this is basically going to give you all of the graphs which i have guys i'm just going to go through it here real quick you can make sure to copy everything step by step here and it's going to give you an overall benchmark of the average lowest and highest fps so guys and i tested now three different drivers version 537.58 546.17 and 552.22 and first of all let's take a look at the interrupt to dpc latency or basically hardware interrupts or how responsive my system is. And I have two different values, current one and highest. And I'm gonna put right now here on screen all of the results which I got, guys. And you can see as an example that on version 537.58, I got the highest one. So at any given time, the interrupt latency was 170 microseconds, which is so much more in comparison than on the two other ones. You can definitely say that when it comes down to interrupt latency, driver 546.17 was the best one. But was it also the best one in terms of FPS? Because I tested, of course, as well the average on FPS and the highest FPS counted. I was trying to free build while not looking into the sky because every Everyone knows whenever you free build, when you look into the sky, it just randomly spikes into the thousands of FPS. So therefore I tried to avoid this guys very hard actually, just trying to free build naturally because there's so many people who look into the sky while doing these benchmarks and they're like, oh yeah, I'm getting a thousand FPS. But when they free build, it drops all the way down to like 300. And here again, guys, I benchmarked it for all three of them. And actually the best average FPS, I also got on driver 546.17. And the highest measured you can't really take because as mentioned, as soon as you 
look for like a second into the sky, guys. Gonna get like crazy FPS, but I still put it right now here on screen. You can see the driver 537.58 had like the highest FPS overall, but as mentioned, guys, you can just simply stare into the sky for like one, two seconds. So therefore, we're going to take the average one. And it was noticeably better on 546.70. The second best driver overall was 552.22, and the worst one was actually 537.58, where a lot of people on the internet say that this one is actually really good. And I'm quite sure that there's 100% any system out there where this driver performs really well. This is why I showed you in the previous step, guys, how to actually benchmark this on your specific system. Because this is gonna tell you which driver is actually the best one for your hardware. But always, whenever you test out a new driver, at least compare it with the most up-to-date NVIDIA one. And of course, guys, the most important part is as well your ping. This is why you see FNCS winners like Mero, Asian Jeff, and many more pros use Gear Up Booster. The best part is, with my link in the description, you can actually try it out for absolutely free, guys. Gear Booster is gonna look for the best DNS server in your near, always making sure that you have the lowest and most stable ping. Even if you already have really good ping, guys, it's still worth it because it's gonna make it way more consistent. The Gear Booster is gonna actively in the background search for the best DNS servers, always making sure that you have the best connection to Fortnite. As mentioned, check it out for absolutely free with the link in the description, guys. So guys, now I'm about to show you how you can literally install any driver manually on your PC the easiest way. It's gonna automatically remove everything from your previous driver which you have already pre-installed and I'm going to show you on top how to deep load your driver because there's actually so much software which Nvidia usually downloads as well which you don't even need guys. So first of all click here and manually select the driver version and then you can see you have all the previous versions. Well theoretically not all of them because with show all versions you can see even more older versions but keep in mind guys they have issues running on Windows 11. So if you're running Windows 11 I would actually just only leave here the normal ones which we have here. So let's say as an example that we want to install the latest driver now here yeah. We have desktop and studio. DCH is basically a compatibility mode that it's already optimized and that you should have no issues. Even if it doesn't say DCH, you can still utilize it, guys. Just simply look out for desktop or if you use a laptop, of course, laptop. I would not touch the studio drivers, actually. And then we can see now select components to install. So for me, as an example, I'm going to click now on the recommended and you can see only display driver is actually required. Physics X you need for multiple games. HD audio via HDMI is only if you actually utilize it on a TV, let's say as an example, if you actually want to use HDMI cable to get some audio out of something, you know, like out of your monitor, if it has speakers, maybe if you like to play, I don't know, Forza or something like that, and you like to utilize the built-in speakers. Then for the rest, you don't really need most of this here, only like FrameView SDK sometimes, but for most people, this anyway is gonna get reinstalled if you actually utilize application which needs that. The same as well with Microsoft Visuals, this one here as well gets automatically installed whenever you get like a Steam game or something like that. But what do you really wanna care about is GeForce Experience components, guys. Virtual audio, telemetry, shadow play, GeForce experience, and all of these here, I don't really need them. I do everything manual on my PC, and the main problem with them is, do you see how many processes this already is? And this is just the Nvidia app. Now imagine you would have GeForce Experience and all of them running in the background. That would be easily like at least 20, 25 processes in total. And this is also due to the fact that here I already disabled some of them. So what I do usually is, I only check these two here on the top, and the rest I do manually. I'm going to show you, we're going to use a specific tool which is designed for Nvidia GPUs, so we're not gonna utilize GeForce Experience or the Nvidia app. But now we're gonna click on the next and it's going to copy now all of the data which we need for the current driver. Okay guys, and now you can see installation tweaks. This is now where it gets interesting. First of all, disable all telemetry and advertising. Perform a clean installation if you have a previous driver installed. Most of you are probably gonna have this, so therefore make sure this is checked. The next up, we're going to move over to show export tweaks and in here now as well also disable driver telemetry. Disable Nvidia HD audio, also don't need it. As mentioned, I don't utilize HDMI or anything like that or any sort of Nvidia voice AI. They have tons of AI modes which are all now built into this. But since I have most of it in my GoXLR or OBS, this is not really important for me. And if you're a comp player, you probably also don't need it. Then guys, enable the MSI mode. This is basically the same thing like MSI utility v3. You can see interrupt policy, leave it on default and just simply make sure to put it on high. Now, Next up guys, this mode here is actually from the 1900s. This is such an old tech bro. I remember this. This was like invented actually by Intel or something it was back then to actually sort of like prevent you from making like a copy of a movie or something like that. Like this is insanely old thing. It doesn't even work anymore. I don't know why it's still pre-installed on Nvidia. Like this is something from like the mid to end 2000s guys. Like this is super relevant. Make sure that it's disabled. And then we're already good to go basically. Click on the next guys and then you should see installation of tweaks. Now it's 
that says finish here guys and what's pretty cool is you can install it either on your pc or if you want to do this for a second pc or give it to a friend you can actually build a package so you can make like an install.exe file but now just simply click on install and it's going to get automatically applied on your pc so what we need for this next step now guys is the nvidia profile inspector this is the tool which we're going to utilize which doesn't have the annoying nvidia app geforce experience and all of that and the best part about it is it's not running 24 7 on your pc just simply click here on the nvidia profile inspector and then you're going to get a zip file once you got it here just simply drag it onto your desktop and in here now we have a bunch of options we can either apply a global driver profile for basically all games or you could even search out specific games like fortnite and then it's going to tell you here fortnite windows 64 shipping exe and it should be marked green then you know that you actually selected the right exe and once we get it running guys and you selected fortnite as an example those are the best universal settings which you can straight up copy first of all on the g-sync make sure to put it application mode on off application requested state to forced off application state itself to disallow guys super important that you actually don't put it to force off but actually disallow then global feature on off global mode on off as well preferred refresh rate of course on the highest available then vertical sync forced off unless you're using 60 to 75 hertz there's sometimes vertical sync can actually help if you have screen tearing. Other than that, also force off. Then for anti-aliasing guys, FXA enabled, you're gonna put on disallowed, then off, off, on, gamma correction, basically just lighting. The rest you can straight up copy here, one to one. Then under texture filtering guys, you're gonna make sure to put anti-strophic optimization on on. This helps basically to preload textures and all of that stuff. Sample optimization on on as well. Filtering mode on user defined slash off. Then prevent anti-strophic filtering on on since we actually wanna prevent it. Since we wanna simply go for the best performance and texture filtering quality on high performance. Then you're basically already set. Apply these changes real quick. Close your NVIDIA profile inspector and now you can hop into Fortnite.